Hey guys, this is Annette, Ask Dr. Annette, and I'm here with my friend Sloan, and we have an amazing topic for you today. We are going to talk about loving yourself, self-love. If you have a question about what does that mean, or you think you already love yourself enough and you can't understand why people keep telling you that you need to love yourself, I'm in a lot of groups with women that are talking about uh, domestic situations or self-esteem and things like that. And a lot of them get frustrated when somebody says you need to love yourself first because they, first of all, can't wrap their head around that concept or they think they already do love themselves. Um, but honestly, if you love yourself the way you should, then your life changes in a dramatic way. But if you don't understand how that works, then you can't really do it. So Sloan is a business and lifestyle coach. She's a consultant. She helps people step into their greatness. And she's a former business attorney. And she's worked with over 450 clients. So this is not a new thing for her. She's not new to helping people. And I thought that it would be great for her to, to pop on and just give us some tips and kind of help us understand how important it is to love yourself and what that really means. And you know, maybe give us some tips on how you can start the process because it's not something you just snap your fingers and it happens, yes. right? Yes. Well, thank you for having me, Annette. I'm so honored to be here and the work that you're doing and inspiring and up-leveling people inspires me. So I appreciate the opportunity so to be here you. with you. Yeah. So this is such a good, juicy topic that I love to talk about because what ends up happening for us a lot of times, and tell me if this resonates with you, is we hear, oh, you should love yourself more. Oh, you have to have a, a good relationship with yourself. Put yourself first, all this stuff. And it kind of becomes just another to do or another thing to put on my list of where I'm not good enough. <laughs> okay, now I've got to do this too on top right. of everything else. And it becomes well, that weight. I can see where people can be like, oh, so now it's my fault that I don't love myself right. enough. And so now this. <laughs> Yes, yes. So I have a really um, different perspective on this self love that I think if if um, the shift in the way of seeing it can be really helpful. And I want to start off with a story. It's a personal story that I'll tell you about my experience with this. And then I'll share what this perspective is. So I used to think um, let's say a couple years ago, I felt like, yeah, I love myself. I mean, I, I, my life was going pretty well. I had a relationship with a partner. We were traveling the world. My business was doing really well. I was just, I kind of had all the things in place. And I was one of those places in life where things were going pretty great. And I felt good about myself. I actually remember I was at Burning Man and we're out in the desert at night and there's dancing. And I remember being out in the desert and I was just dancing with myself and really kind of feeling great about life and things were good. Only inside, deep inside, I knew something, actually a couple of things weren't quite right. And I, I had this feeling of, wow, okay, everything's really what I've been wanting on the outside and what I've been building towards on the outside. And yet, I felt lonely. I felt like people around me didn't really understand me. And then more importantly, I felt like the direction that I was taking in business, which was the same work that I'm doing now, but the direction that my business was going in, I was kind of coasting. And I knew that I had more to give. So I actually, at that time, I made a decision a really radical decision. I ended my relationship and I put all of my personal relationships besides with my daughter on hold. And I took a four month sabbatical that wasn't planned four months. It was just what it ended up being four months by myself to really look at my life and look at who I'd been and how I had this situation of all the right pieces. And yet I wasn't fulfilled. And in that process, and the reason I'm sharing this story now as it relates to loving yourself, I got really lonely. I mean, I was so alone, which I had chosen for myself on purpose, but I came to the reality of this situation that was really hard and lonely and sad and feeling isolated. And I had to really face 
how much I loved myself and to see, wow, when things in my life were pretty good and everything was more even, I had this feeling good about myself was kind of where I was equating a good relationship with me. But when I was all alone, the truth of my relationship about with myself and how I felt about myself came out and I had to rework what that really meant. And what I did in that process was I redesigned what does it look like to love yourself? And I mentioned it a couple times, the depth of it is really about the quality of your relationship with you. So if you think about, I like to use this example, if you had a partner, let's say your romantic partner, who never paid attention to you, never touched you, never did anything with you, and kind of ignored you off to the side, what would your relationship be like? It wouldn't be very good. No. And yet most of us, that's how we treat ourselves. We put ourselves last. We never spend time with ourselves. We don't touch our bodies and appreciate our physical bodies and all those things. And then we wonder, why don't I have a good relationship with myself? Right. So I got to use that time to really build a real relationship with me, spending time with me, touching my body, doing a lot of practices in the mirror. And, and we can talk in more detail about these because they're juicy and exciting. And the concept that I work towards is what's the quality of my relationship with me rather than do I love myself? Because I think loving yourself and also self-care and self-confidence those things come out of having a good quality relationship with yourself. So how's that resonating? What do you think about it, Annette? That's great. I mean, I hear people talk about things like self-care all the time. And, you know, I even have like a little self-care handout that I give people that basically just breaks down what self-care is, you know, like Meditation can be considered self-care. Mm -hmm. Going to get a massage could be self-care. You know, maybe just closing yourself in the bathroom alone for 20 minutes and taking yes. a bath could be self-care. So yes. there's so many different ways to look at those kinds of things. And there are so many people who literally never think about how they can care for their self in any way. Yes. And, and, if, uh, and they're taking care of children and husbands and jobs and, you know, and then they wonder why they're so completely exhausted and out of touch with who they really are. Yes. And, you know, this conversation is so important because I know there are people watching who would be like, well, yeah, that sounds amazing. But I have the kids and my husband and my family and business and I have all this stuff. So what does this even mean? How do I make this space? And what does that look like in real life? Right. And I want to just, number one, totally acknowledge that reality and that truth. And also let's acknowledge that a lot of us as women specifically, and I'm sure this applies to some men too, but for a lot of women, we're socialized to think of other people before us and to take care of other people first. And this isn't about blaming anyone. It's just self-awareness. Right. But if that is the way of being that you have, it's really important to, to notice the depth of it. How deep does that go? You know, do, is it more like, oh, I feel like doing something else, but I do things for other people? Or is it I drive myself into the ground, taking care of everyone and everything first? Right. So that self-awareness first. And then truly the shift is starting to make a different choice. Even if it's just a little bit of a different choice. Maybe it's, I, no matter what, I spend 10 minutes by myself in the morning before I jump into taking care of everyone else. Maybe yeah. it's, um, one of my favorite practices is before coming home to the family or, you know, partner at, in the evening, if you drive home is going into the, the bedroom and actually changing clothes or doing something to shift for yourself into now the mood with home. Or if you work from home, just taking that time. And I actually had a client who's like, yeah, that's not possible. She she comes home and she has a one-year-old and a three-year-old and her husband and everybody's like, you're home. <laughs> so yes, even you, like the dogs will do that. Like yes. you walk in the door and you have all these groceries or whatever and you're just 
bombarded with all of these people that need or want they something. Need and want them. you. Yes. So we developed yeah. with her. She sits in the car for 10 minutes before she goes in for herself to regroup herself and then bring her best presence in with her family. So it really is a choice that has to literally to start making a different choice. And the, the motivation and inspiration, and that you kind of referenced it in the beginning, which is everything changes. Mm -hmm. Everything changes. So what is that? What does that mean? What is that meant for you, Annette? Um, you know, it, it's to me, it's like being able to appreciate peace mm -hmm. and being able to experience joy at a level that you cannot do if you don't have a connection with yourself. Yes, I love that appreciating and both of those is kind of tying into being really present yeah right there's a level of presence and living in life now of course life can only exist now but it's like how often is my mind in the now to experience the joy and the peace that's not possible when i put myself last no or way down on the list no. Well, and I, there's a quote, um, if you're, if you're living in the past, you're, you're dealing with anger. If you're living in the future, you're dealing with stress. And if you're living in the moment, you're dealing with peace or something. Mm. Like that. That's a loose translation of what I remember seeing somewhere. But every time I see that, I'm always like, oh, that is so true. Yes, that's good. I like it. Yeah. yeah. So I think the other pieces of it are, um, a much more conscious creation of your life. Mm -hmm. So the shift that I've had since I really overhauled my relationship with myself, the biggest shift that I've had is that because I'm so clearly good with me, meaning I love to have other people in my life. I'm a very social person. I love to be around family, friends, everybody. And the knowing that I'm comfortable being with me and having had a depth of experience with it means that I don't need as much from other people. And actually, I'm not going to say I don't need anything from other people, but yes, really yes. working towards I am a good unit here on my own. And mm -hmm. then I choose who to have in my life. I choose what interactions I'm okay with and what I enjoy and what I don't. I make a lot more choice in my life because of how I have the embodied knowing of who I am and, and that I'm okay on my own. Yes, so much. Yeah. And that once you get to that point, what other people think of you and mm -hmm. what happens around you affects you so much less because you're not seeking approval because you're already comfortable in who you are. Yes, I love that. And I am a recovering people pleaser. So I <laughs> know seeking the approval of other people very well. And yes, it's a lot less. Sometimes I still catch myself in the pattern of people pleasing, seeking approval, but then it's like, oh, wait a minute. I don't actually need to operate from that place anymore. I don't do that because remember I'm good here. I'm good with me. So right. it's a really interesting perspective shift that then shifts all the experience in, in the world outside. Right. And I love this conversation. So I have a group called the Warriors of the Heart Society. It's a Facebook group online. And I would love anyone who's interested in this conversation to come in. We actually just had a really beautiful conversation. I went to a 10 day silent meditation retreat. And I asked the women in the group, what are your self-care practices? How do you take care of yourself? And what does that look like? And a bunch of women responded. And when I came back from the retreat, I waited until I just had some free time. And I sat down and I just read through all of it. And I was so struck by how we as women really are kind of gravitating towards the same practices and experiences to nourish ourselves that were, like you mentioned, Annette, meditation, there was creativity, there's physical practice, some kind of physical exercise, and, and a couple others, but just seeing how 
there are some things that we commonly do to reconnect with ourselves and who we are on a deep level. And it's a really beautiful life journey to be looking into what are those things for you and getting to know yourself more deeply and more deeply. Right. Well, and if you can't shut off the outside world, you can't really have that kind of a relationship with yourself because there's too much noise. There's too much static. There's too many responsibilities and things going on for you to be, you have to be able to turn that off at some point so that you can let your heart shine through yes. your purpose show up because a lot of us don't know what our purpose is or we're not exactly clear. Like me, I'm kind of going through a shift personally right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I mean, I kind of know a broad scope of where I'm headed because it's not much different than I've always done, but things are getting kind of molded and tweaked and my purpose is kind of shifting. And, but I'm, because of that process, I'm starting to feel more passionate about things. And in all honesty, for the last year, I don't know that I've felt passionate about anything at all. So reconnecting with yourself and, and your inner voice and being able to love yourself for who you are allows that passion to reignite and start to show up. So are you noticing then more passion as you are cultivating your relationship with yourself? Absolutely. And it it's not necessarily that I'm passionate about any one thing only, but I'm more passionate about everything. Like this morning I went for a walk, which I haven't done in a long time because I just, um, just haven't, I just haven't taken responsibility for that. So mm. I started, I went for a walk this morning and I walked from my house to the beach, which is um, probably a half a mile and back. It wasn't a, in a crazy long walk. Maybe it's three quarters of a mile and back, but just walking, you know, across the intercoastal water and over to the beach, even though I didn't actually go to the ocean because I didn't want to get sand in my tennis shoes, <laughs> I was still there. And it was like, every time I took another step, I wanted to take one more step. And it reminded me of, um, what's that movie? Um, where he runs all the way across the United States. Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump. It reminded yeah. me of that. So when he's walking and he just keeps walking and everybody's like, Forrest, why haven't you turned around yet? And he's like, I don't know. I'm just going to keep walking. And he just walked until he was done walking. And then he went home. And I, totally like felt that this morning when I was out going for a walk mm. because I had no purpose. I had no goal. I had no particular place that I was heading to. I was just walking until I felt like turning around. And then I came back and I ended up at the beach and turned around and came back. So, you know, it's, you become passionate about things that maybe you're not expecting to be passionate about, but you find joy in moments where maybe you weren't finding joy before. I love that example and that story because what I'm taking from that is you're finding a purpose inside you were walking with purpose and you felt driven to keep walking and you went to the beach and went back and I love that you're bringing that up because I I think it's actually even a deeper part of this conversation about the relationship with yourself is if you think about it the greatest minds on this planet or some of the greatest minds on this planet are currently are being used to figure out how to capture and hook our attention at all times. <laughs> that's on the internet, that's Facebook, that's marketing. Literally the smartest people on the planet are put to work to figure out how to take our attention from going within and from the place we want it to be, or we may naturally have it gravitate towards, to where they want our attention to be. And this process of deepening and building a relationship with yourself and making it a priority in your own life is a process of moving those things aside, how you said, you know, getting the space. And then what comes out is starting to hear what I'm being called to do, see, have, experience from inside. And you use just that tiny example of the walk, but in that case, it wasn't where you had to be or what you need. You were just like, I felt like I keep walking and I did. 
And that's a little example of something that, you know, expanded out for life is what does it look like when your whole life is structured that way? Following the desires that are inside. And I know I feel okay with myself that whatever happens, I'm going to take care of it. I'm going to be okay. And feeling good enough to pursue that, that's a fulfilled life. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Such a juicy conversation. (laughs) (laughs) That's why I wanted to have you on here because I know that um, I have a lot of stories and I tell stories a lot to to help people understand things, but I knew that you had a, a much deeper understanding and maybe you could format things in a way that would, you know, explain it to people that maybe are not because everybody learns in different ways. So sometimes just hearing a story about something isn't the way you need to learn. Maybe there's another way. So, I mean, if we can reach more people and raise more awareness and get people that maybe are searching for something, but they don't know what it is, you know, maybe it's inside of you. (laughs) You don't know how to get it out. (laughs) How do we help people do that? You know, like, how do we, we have to get their attention first. We have to raise their awareness first because without awareness, you can't grow into something else or develop into something that maybe you're searching to become. Yes. It's, it's getting on the purpose path that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So I have three different practices that I could share if that would be helpful on where people can begin with this. One of my favorites is, it's kind of funny, but it's a really beautiful practice. Well, the the place that you can carry it out is kind of funny. So I talked about touching your body. And for a lot of us, and especially women, but a lot of us, feeling physical touch brings us into the present moment. And so one of my favorite practices is literally feeling my own body. And preferably that would be naked, you know, actually feeling the skin. But I've advised women who are like, I'm too busy. Everything's crazy. You can do it while you're going to the bathroom, sitting on the toilet, going to the bathroom, actually just taking a conscious moment with yourself. And the the main thing with the feeling your body is that you're feeling it on your hands and you're also feeling it on your body that yourself touching you to be in the present moment, to appreciate what you feel. You know, we have a lot of judgments about what we see. And this is a closed eye practice to be feeling actually the curvy parts of your body feel really good, appreciating what you have. Or if you're really slender and can feeling, you know, those, the pieces of who you really are. And I also actually do this on my face. So this could look like just holding my face like this, touching my cheeks, you know, it might be feeling my hair, but The practice is really just appreciating me physically. Okay. I love that. It's, it's really tender and it's a, it's a really nice way to same as from a partner. I want to be touched and you know, we appreciate that. That's the same for ourselves. If you never touch yourself, that's not building a tender, loving relationship. Okay. Um, The next one is, that I think is hugely important and beneficial as a morning practice. And we, I think we've all heard about morning practices. I actually created one that's for women or for people who, who would rather have a more fluid practice, meaning this. Most of the ones that I know about kind of more mainstream are created by men. And it's, it's regimented, like 20 minutes, do this, do this, do this, and it's fixed. Where what I found is that for people who need a little more fluidity, creative people, you know, women, we have different cycles of the month in our bodies. The practice that I created is really honoring that and also honoring your full schedule. So it could be done in 15 minutes, or it could be done in an hour. But the main thing is there are three segments, and you just devote equal time to each. And I have a variety of practices in there. So that one of them is body touching, there are dance parties, meditation, just things to mix it up to really keep it fresh and keep enjoying your morning practice. But the core of it, the main piece of the morning practice is really taking a little time for you to consciously begin your day. And so for me, even if you only have 15 minutes, anybody can wake up 15 minutes earlier than they are to get up before the kids and the everything starts. 
and spend some time with themselves. What do you think? Do you do a morning practice, Annette? Um, it's funny. I typically do like my best thinking in the shower. Mm. So if I if I'm stressed or um, maybe just feeling out of touch or like I like I have something rolling around in there that I need to like work my way through. A lot of times I'll go in the bathroom and shut the door and just take a nice long hot shower and just mm. not listen to music. Cause a lot of times people are never alone in their house without music or a TV or something or another person talking. So if you can shut yourself off from all of that outside distraction and I'm, I'm kind of a busybody, so it's difficult for me to just sit and meditate. I, I have a really tough time doing that because mm -hmm. I'm always thinking and I should be doing this or I should be doing that. But when you're in the shower, there's a limited amount of things that you can do. <laughs> so um, you, if you think or let your mind wander and you push away your responsibilities for the day, just for the 10 or 15 minutes that you're in the bathroom, it opens up your mind and your heart to kind of think about things. And sometimes I have the most awesome ideas while I'm in the shower, just because that's how I, I shut out the outside world. Mm -hmm. I love that. You're, you're consciously making space to be thinking and processing. And that's so beautiful. Really awesome practice. I want to add that one. <laughs> to my it's repertoire really good for people that have a hard time sitting still. Yes. Cuz it's something you're going to do anyway. Yeah. Yes. Yes, good. Okay. And the last one is something that is a little odd, but it makes a huge difference and it is a mirror practice. So, I actually originally heard this from this book called Love Yourself Like Your Life Depends on It, which is fantastic, very short read, I highly recommend. And I've, I've expanded on it. So they do a kind of look yourself in the mirror and look yourself in the eye and say, I love you, I love you, I love you. And there's a lot of value in that because I like to say, when you look yourself in the mirror, in the eye and talk to yourself, your level of discomfort is gonna show you a lot about where you are in the quality of your relationship with you. True. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. So the deepening of the practice is, and at first it's awkward and kind of weird and okay, yeah, just try it, just move through that. But the deepening of the practice is, you know, there's all this research showing with children. It doesn't really help your kids' self-esteem and how they feel about themselves if you're like, you're great, good job, you did so good, I'm proud of you, because it's not concrete. It's just like this Def, um, inflated comments that don't mean anything. So if we apply that into the relationship building with ourselves, it's like looking in the mirror and I use it as a time to say things that I wanna really appreciate and acknowledge about myself. And it might be the way I moved through a really challenging conversation. It might be comforting myself and having compassion for the way I didn't do something well. You know, I had an interaction with my daughter that not how I want to be and just acknowledging yeah that did not go well that was right. not my best and I <sighs> sucks it hurts right you no know? or oh, I really see how you're showing up with clients and you're doing the best that you can to really let people know about what's possible for them in life and just really building myself up from a genuine place with real comments and what's developed for me over time truly is just a really sweet relationship with me. Sometimes I pass myself in the mirror and I'm like, just sometimes I'm like, oh, you're looking good. <laughs> but I feel it inside or you're doing so great. I love you. Right. And that, that kind of sweetness with my relationship with me is me continuing to cultivate a tenderness with myself that makes it so I can go out into the world vulnerably and I can really let myself shine as bright as I can. And then how we talked about earlier, taking the actions that might seem scary, following my purpose path, hearing what that even is, and all these things that we want in life, it, it opens up so many of the doors. 
Yes. Well, and I commonly will tell people, you know, talk to yourself the way you would talk to your child or your grandchild. Yes. You know, I mean, if you said the things that you say to yourself out loud to another person, they would probably cry. Yeah. So practice talking to yourself the way you would talk to someone that you love. And just like you said, when you see yourself in the mirror, sometimes you stop and you're like, good job. <laughs> you know, I mean, what if you, what if you did that? What if you actually stopped and, and don't just go, you're amazing because right. that doesn't really tell you anything. Like you said, be more specific. I like the blonde in your hair or I like how blue your eyes are, or I love how you handled that situation with a specific person. The more specific you can be, the more it all soaks in. Because, you know, just saying you're amazing, your body doesn't really know what to do with that. Yes. And I think that's the missing link with affirmations, just affirmations, is people... Mm -hmm. I had a client who um, she's done a lot of work and women's work and she knew that she should be feeling she's beautiful. So she's doing a lot of like, you're beautiful, you're amazing, you're beautiful. And I was like, well, do you really think you're beautiful? And she thought about it for a minute and she's like, no, I don't really feel like that inside. And I said, okay, good. That's awareness. That's the first step of everything. So now let's look at what do you admire about either your looks or the way that you are, whatever you want to cultivate here. Let's find the pieces of what you, you authentically feel grounded with and love on those and pay attention to those because when we allow those genuine things to build and grow, then it opens up space for seeing more of the truth about the amazing woman that you are, beautiful. Yeah amazing aspects of your body. Do you have body parts you want to change? Of course. Does everybody? Yes, of course. And those things can get way down on the attention list as you start to pay attention to the things that you do love and you do appreciate, and you do adore about yourself. Absolutely. I love that. Yes. I had a fleeting thought. Oh, I know what it was. Um, you know, that whole fake it till you make it thing. Yeah. Everybody always says, you know, fake it till you make it. But my problem with fake it till you make it is that you feel fake. So like you said, find something that you do appreciate about yourself and build on that. Don't fake it. Don't be unauthentic or inauthentic, whatever the word is that I was supposed to say there. Um, be authentic and find something that you can be appreciative and work on that start with one thing and build from there don't fake it till you make it because people can smell a fake from a mile away yeah and in this case you know if you're faking it that yep. client she knew inside she didn't feel beautiful and then was like but so why isn't this working it's not i'm doing all this stuff and i'm not actually feeling better about myself that's the end goal here is not right some outside metric, but it's about how you feel on the inside shifting. Absolutely. And so we, we have this kind of conditioning of on one hand, I should be so perfect and so amazing. And then on the other hand, but I shouldn't think I'm too perfect or amazing or else I'm a jerk or I'm selfish or whatever those messages are. And it's like, right. what we're talking about is allowing the great amazing parts of you to come to the surface and you to acknowledge them. And part of the relationship with the self is getting clarity on the parts that aren't amazing and learning to love and have compassion for those. That's the key is like not pretending they don't exist and becoming some egomaniac and also not making them like this, the big reality of who you are when it's not, you're doing some beautiful, great things that you try so hard for your family or the way you put yourself together and your business and, you know, your elements in your life are really special and to allow those to become bigger while holding the truth about who you are. That's a good quality relationship. Right. I love that. I really do. That's awesome. Good. 
Well, hopefully some of those tips will be beneficial to people. Tell us again how people can get in touch with you if they're interested in following you or learning more about what you do. Okay. Well, if you're interested in the morning ritual, our website is warriorsoftheheart.co. It's warriors, plural, of the heart.co. And you can um, download the morning ritual there. And you'll also be signed up for our content, which is periodic. And of course, you can unsubscribe anytime. I would really like you to get this if this morning ritual interests you. And if you, this kind of conversation is something that you're interested in or engaged in, I have a group of women. They're actually people, mostly people who I know from around the world have come together in this group. And the only real qualification for the group is that you have a commitment to personal growth. And everybody signs confidentiality to get into the group. So we're just having juicy conversations about this and a lot of other topics um, as they relate to really living our most fulfilled lives. That's awesome. Yeah. And I mean, there's so many people whose lives don't feel fulfilled. And mm-hmm. I think with the the world that we live in, where everything is rush, 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 and you have so many negative things coming at you all day long that it's difficult sometimes to feel like you are living your best life. And there's no reason to feel guilty about that. But if you're interested in, in creating a situation where you do feel fulfilled and you are creating your best life and you'd like to help your children or your family understand how to live their best life, then these are the things that are super important. And Sloan has some amazing resources. And of course, you've all seen her wonderful personality. So, um, you know, if you're interested in learning more, reach out to me, reach out to her. You know, we're just here to serve. We just want to help people. That's what we do. And that's what gives us fulfillment. And one of the reasons that we love to help people so much is because it helps us serve our purpose. Yes, I love that. If you want fulfillment in life or more fulfillment or you know more is possible, please somehow come into my world, introduce yourself to me, send me a message, anything. I would love to know you because like you just said, Annette, to me, being surrounded by people who are really excitedly going for their best life or want to be excitedly going for their best life, that to me is exactly the kind of humans that I like to surround myself with and support and guide and know. So, so happy to be here today. Thank you. Awesome. Well, I will send you a link so you can download this video in case you want to share it out on any social media places. Um, And um, yeah, just stay, stay in touch. I'd love to hear more about what you're doing. And if anybody has any questions, I'll be sure to send them your way. Great. Thank you, Annette. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for taking time out of your day to do this. Yes. So happy to be here. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.